I'm Christine Scott. Um, I'm here from our company, Paul Scott Plumbing. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about backwater valves. Um, I'm really going to give you a good general uh, information about what a backwater valve is and what it can do in your home to protect your home when we come into a situation like we did just recently where we got rained on very quickly, all the water came rushing in and filled up all the drains and backed up a lot of people because a lot of them made it uh, back into your homes. So. What a backwater valve does and what it can do is basically help protect your home. So, I'm going to move on here a little bit. The first things that we're going to talk about, these are a couple things we're going to talk about tonight. One is understanding how your sewer and storm system works, number one. Understanding the difference between a separate system, storm and sewer, and a combination storm and sewer. Most of you in the city here do have a combination storm and sewer, which means that everything from the rainwater and everything from your sewer ultimately come together and go out in one pipe out. And that does make a difference in how we protect your home. We're going to talk about what a backwater valve is and then exactly how a backwater valve can protect your home from backups and protect your um, investment, which is your home. Uh, the most important thing when we're talking backwater valves is tying in your storm system with the backwater valves. So when we're talking about putting in a backwater valve in your home, it is imperative that you address the storm water right along with the sewer water backing up into your home. And we'll get into a little bit of this and how it works. What I've done here, we've got, is just to give you a good idea of how your systems work. Most people don't really know how it all comes in, how it all goes out. So just to give you a little um, idea, you've got your systems inside. They all work their way to what we call a branch line and all your waste goes in and down and out to the main sewer. Okay, everything in and out. Everything from the outside rainwater, downspouts, comes in, generally goes down into some uh, drain tile. The next slide I'll show you is more and it makes its way into your system and goes out, or if it's a separate system, it goes out to a separate sewer. When these systems back up, and it comes back up into your home, the goal is to protect this home and put in what is called a backwater valve to stop anything from backing up and making its way back up into your home, okay? If anyone has any questions, I, I know we won't get too deep, but if you do, don't hesitate along the way. We did a drawing here for a separate storm and sewer. You're either gonna have one or the other. You're gonna have a combination or you're gonna have a separate storm system. Basically, you're gonna know if you have a separate storm system, if you already have a sump pit, in your home somewhere in your basement. That means that you've got a way for your rainwater to come in around the perimeter of your home. This is what happens. The rain comes down, comes in around the perimeter of your home, makes its way through bleeder lines. This makes its way underground around your home, captures it and, and directs it to a sump pit and then it gets pumped out of the pit and outside or gets pumped out of the pit and back into your sewer line, okay? If you have a combination, it comes in the bleeder lines just like the other, makes its way in, 
and it comes through a storm trap which is automatically connected to your sewer line and goes out okay so what we're offering and what we're explaining to you and presenting to you is to help prevent these backups that make their way into the system back up into your home up through floor drains up through a laundry or wherever else in your home okay we put in what is called a back water valve and in essence this is really what a back water valve is it's really a one-way pipe or it's a pipe with a valve a flapper valve that goes in your sewer line and so that when all of your waste that comes down and out can go out it flips through the valve and it goes out but when there is pressure and a backup coming from the city sewer and it tries to go back in this valve is engaged and it stops it from coming back up into your home so that is it's simple it's involved but um, this in essence is what it is this valve can be maintained okay you can get to it if you need to maintain it ever but the valve itself um, is what will protect from the sewers backing up into your home yes I heard that you had to maintain your uh, valve every year and that you had to clean it out or have a professional clean it out is yeah. that true yes you should you should because as we get into I'm going to get into this is how a backwater valve works and I'll get into that you do need to maintain it that is one of the things you absolutely do need to do but the way the backwater valve works is everything comes out okay everything from your waste goes out and again it stops it from there so it prevents the flow from backing up into your home but there's a couple things when you have a backwater valve in which is very important to know um, you know when you have and I, I kind of let me go back a little bit let me go back to the drawing here because this is going to explain a little bit about when you start getting into there's many different people out there that give you many different ways and things to do with a backwater valve and it is very important that if you ever get a backwater valve installed in your home that you make sure that you are looking at the whole system because you cannot just put a backwater valve here in your sewer line and then not address the storm water because what happens is most back water valves are going to be put in when when it is engaged now that you have this storm trap tied into this line and you've got rain pouring down and that backwater valve is engaged you've got to have a place for that rainwater to go so when you do a backwater valve system it's not just this valve you also need to then accommodate an overflow system for your rainwater and we do that with a sump pit and a sump pump which is this so we direct the water to a sump pump and then we get it either outside temporarily while the valve is engaged now i'm going to get to you in a minute as we move on because we'll talk about maintenance and the things that you need with this valve so i think one of the most important things <coughs> excuse me to know when you are getting a backwater valve is to make sure that you don't just get a backwater valve you need the whole thing you need to make sure that you protect your whole system the storm system and the sewer system because they both are a part of your home every home has both of these 
So that is one very, very important thing that you need to be aware of when you're, if you uh, start looking at the system. Now, once you get this system in, it is really a tried and true system. It works. It will protect that, that flow coming back in. But there are some little things about it that you need to be aware of when you have the system. So one of them is when this is engaged, that means that you cannot use your facilities because what's happening is that you're here and the backwater valve is engaged and it is stopping because it's got pressure in here, stopping all the waste. That means that anything trying to come in this pipe and go down and go out, it isn't going to go anywhere. It's going to back up right back up in your home. So you have to be conscious enough and understanding enough that when this valve is engaged, <clears throat> you don't use your facilities. Don't use anything because you're just going to back yourself right up with everything that you're putting down there. How do you know when it's engaged? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a couple, there's a couple, it's sometimes it's tough. They are coming out with a lot of new systems, even to alarm it, pressure to pop a button. You know, there's different things out there, but most time it's going to be common sense. You, you know, you're, you can, one way to check is, this is how I would check if it were in my home, is if you're in a basement and you've got a laundry tub and you can run clear water and watch and see if it backs up in a floor drain. If it backs up a little bit, you've only got clear water. That's one way to know. Um, Looking that, at the street is another big telltale sign. Yeah. If the street is extremely flooded, then chances are the city main is flooded, therefore your backwater valve is closed. Is closed, yeah. Um, so you cannot use anything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you know, you have, to, you have to be aware of that because we had someone just use all their stuff and then they backed all up. And they thought the valve didn't work, but the valve was engaged, but they just backed up with all of their... So that is one thing you do have to be careful of. <clears throat> the other thing, uh, yes, and then you can see I put it up here, it should be maintained and serviced yearly, okay? One thing I will tell you is that you do have to, these can be maintained. They unscrew, you can get down there, you can clean them. It, it, I would not recommend homeowners to do it unless, you know, there are some that are very handy. But if not, you do have to be careful. We do recommend someone do that professionally for you. But the other thing is you gotta be careful what you're flushing down your toilets. Flushables are not flushable. If anybody didn't realize that, flushables really are not flushable. They really do mess with the sewer system. And they get caught up in things. So they don't break down and they don't break down in our systems and they tend to get caught up. They get caught up in roots, so they get caught up in valves. We have seen these where things get caught up in here. So it should be maintained. If you ever have your sewer clean, you should know where, if you have a valve, where it is, and you should always let them know. Yes? Where in the system do you install those? Outside? In, obviously outside right it can be both believe it or not it used to be only inside but now you can now we actually do valves for the whole house outside yeah my basement's finished so i wouldn't do it inside i'd have to do it outside so how yep. deep down is the outgoing sewer line however deep it is is how deep so it goes so maintaining that i'd have to dig up my yard every year no 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 we bring up a clean out yes. now this is one for inside uh, on the floor yeah. but if it's outside it's going to have a pipe that comes all the way to the ground so you can maintain it from above Understood. and get down there yes ma'am if yep. you have a thump pump do you need that if, yes. Yes, yes you still need it to protect from backups but you've, you've already got a sump pump that usually it's a minor working to uh, do an overflow on that for your system because we won't want your sump pump, if you've got a sump pump, it's going right in there. So we're going to overflow outside 
to protect your storm water. Does that make sense? No. No, say that again. So okay. essentially, if you don't mind. Go right ahead. Niles, my protege. <laughs> the, the city of Berkeley in itself is a combination city sewer. So even in your home, if you already have a sump pit and a pump, unless that is being pumped outside on a regular basis, it's being directed into your sanitary. <coughs> So what you have to do is create a separate pipe that will pump from here to the, to the outside, outside of the house. Yeah. And a lot of times that's just something as simple as turning a valve on your primary discharge line so that it'll divert the water to the exterior of the home rather than yeah, into the sanitary sewer. <coughs> yes. I think my thumb pump does create the pit outside. So if I have that, then I wouldn't need this valve. <clears throat> well, this valve. the valve is the valve is actually to prevent from backups from, in, the city from in, in the event of a city backup into your home. So just having a sump pump does not protect from that. You have got a good part of the system already in place, but you definitely don't unless you have this then no, you're not protecting your home from backups. Yes, ma'am. I pour copper sulfate crystals down my cleanout valve once a month to keep the tree roots down. Mm -hmm. Will that hurt the, um, the flapper thing? It should not hurt the valve, no. No. <coughs> no. Yes. Questions? Uh, in terms of maintenance, is it just more of the gross factor, or in terms of who's cleaning it out, and that's why you should go with the professional, or, or what's going on in the maintenance component? Uh, really, it's just general knowledge, making sure that it comes out and goes back in properly, so that it engages properly and is working properly. That's really the main reason. Okay. If someone feels comfortable, <clears throat> it really depends on your own comfort level once you see this. Sure. Right. but. And yeah. then were these previously illegal? Because I had heard rumors that they were illegal in the first place. Mm -hmm. It was what not illegal, but it had to do with placements and making sure, because there's a lot of people that were putting them in and then not accommodating for the storm water. And then what happened was you got a backwater valve in and you think you're protected, and all of a sudden you back up again as soon as you get a rain. So there was a lot of things. You really, as long as you follow code and the city code, you'll, but is, they've made a lot of changes. Is this part of the city code now? Because this seems like it would be a no-brainer to be a part oh, of the Oh, it's on code, trust me. It's on, it they been, all want it, yeah. Do you know how long it's been on code? It's been on code for a long time. It, I think long you time can, is relative. I would, okay, I would. Um, 10 years, 20 years? All, all uh, longer so I have than a new that. House, but my house doesn't have this. So. Yeah. Well, 20 yeah, years ago, probably so. not. But no, all of 10, 10, years. 10, 10 years, it they, should. They used to have manual devices years ago. And they were back. all inside. Yeah, a lot and of them only, were inside. Only inside and under the floor. What it would require is actually turning a wheel, and it would shut a valve. <coughs> have to manually do that sure. otherwise it wouldn't work it whereas wouldn't these engage. are pretty automatic, automatic. Yeah. yeah makes sense but most all new builds and things they all are requiring uh backwater valves on the floor drains and and any of your fixtures below on underground <laughs> yes ma'am um what about the pressure what well, about it i heard that when it backs up and closes the valve there's a ton of pressure in there. Yes. And it can really cause problems to other pipes or the pipe itself um, going out or... Well, the pipe, it's... The pipe should be fine. <laughs> if anything, and this is where it comes down to the maintenance of it, mm -hmm. is if the pressure builds up too much, especially on this one, it's going to, you know, this, it's, gonna it's got rubber ease. seals. Right. So it could pop the seal if it's not maintained properly, if it's not greased so on and so forth. With the ones on the outside, you kind of get a bonus because you've got a riser that comes so up to the grade there level. Too. So that riser, and that's another way of determining if you have the one on the outside, if it's backed up because you can go outside, pull that clean out cap, 
And if you see standing water in the pipe, then that means it's the flat is closed. Yeah. So pressure's not really an issue. No. I don't know. As long as it's maintained okay and this <laughs> lid yeah. is secured properly, it's essentially water. That's what I've seen when our basement's back up. I mean, you get a fountain. You do, yeah. 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 But I mean, if you got know, a lot of pressure, it's going yeah. to be keeping it out if there. If you're it's got some weight to it, and these caps, I mean, this is Schedule 40 PVC. Yeah. It's heavy duty. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I read somewhere that you have to have one of those for each drain. Well, it, it's either each drain inside, or it's going to be one main one outside. So there's options. You really have to look at your home, your situation, your layout, and make a determination as to which way is best for you. There are options to go either way. Yes. Um, back to what the gentleman said about the sub pump. Yes. And diverting the rainwater mm -hmm. someplace. Right. If uh, you have a sump pump. Does it go into the drain tiles under the house? Is that where it gets diverted? No, it comes from the drain yeah. tile, makes its way <laughs> into the sump pit, and then from there we pump it up and out. So you have to put another hole in your house in order to grab that water, put a, a, yes. a pipe into yes. um, <clears throat> like the driveway. Yes. Yes. Or the yes. side yard. Correct. Or whatever. Yeah. Correct. And it's normally just an inch and a half hole. Small. Very small. Yeah. Um, and it just pumps it outside. Yes. 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 To answer your question. Correct. And what you want to do from it th from there is entirely up to you. Whether you want to divert it further away from the house. Um, obviously, of, the yeah. further away from the house, the better off you are, because then you're not recycling the water continually. If you pump it, you know, this black line's your foundation here. If you're pumping it out to right here, and there's soil there, it's gonna go down into the soil back into your weeping tile. Right. Which is still okay. better than it dumping into your sanitary. But right. the further you can get away from the house, the better off it you are. Slows down yeah. the whole cycling and, and holding of the water. I, I'm assuming that um, you are familiar with the Berkeley sewers. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. <laughs> My question is, if you put it outside, where does it go? The front yard or the backyard? You put it out wherever your pump is. Yeah. Wherever your pit ends up being in your home, wherever we, you know, wherever you figure out that place, it's going to go out that closest wall generally. And okay. it's going to, you usually try and keep it away from a driveway. You try to put it out just like your yeah. downspouts. You try to just get it out away from the house and uh, do it. Remember that that's only temporary during that time that, the, that that valve is engaged. Other than that, that water is going back into the sewer and going out like it normally would. So that's only a temporary situation when that valve is engaged. So if you have a sump pump currently, mm -hmm. would that uh, backwater valve attach to the sump pump, to the existing sump pump? No. It doesn't attach to the sump pump, but what we do is rework some piping to accommodate the overflow so that when that valve is engaged, that your pump now goes outside instead of staying in your sewer line. See, right now, if you have you have a sump pump right now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, agree. so your sump pump right now. And I have a big hole. Okay, yeah, but let, let's just, your sump pump right now drains and goes into your sewer line. Okay. Somewhere it goes to your sewer line. If you put one of these in, Okay, when we put it in, your, your sump pump now is still trying to go in there, in that water, or in that line. <laughs> so if it engages, you've got to have a way for it to go somewhere else. Does that make sense? So it's <clears throat> put 
nearby the sump pump, not necessarily. It goes in, in the, the sewer yeah. line. Yeah, so this drawing is, it's pretty much the way most Berkeley homes are in terms of how your systems are set up. So whether you have a backwater valve out in your yard, okay, this is your front yard, this is your main sewer line which comes down and goes into the city sewer. Whether it, we dig up your sewer line out in the yard, put a backwater valve here, or we break open the floor and put it here. In almost every house in Berkeley, whether you have a sump pump or not, that storm water is either gonna tie into here or it's gonna get pumped into here via the sump pump. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So if the awesome. city sewer backs up and shuts that flapper, you've got, on the previous drawing, there was a storm trap. You're gonna have water trickling through that storm trap and eventually it's gonna fill up your up. underfloor lines. <laughs> Worst case scenario, it starts backing up. And the same thing with your sump pump, most of these homes that get pumped into your main clean out, the pressure from that pump, pumping the storm water into the sewer, will for sure open that flap. And then once this opens, all that sewer comes right into your home. So if you just have a plumber install one of these, that's only 50% of what's gonna protect your home. The other 50% is figuring out what you're gonna do with, with that, that storm with water. With that rain, with that storm water. To divert that from the sanitary sewer to another location, which is gonna be the outside of the house. Right. We're only pumping it to the outside for a temporary basis. Yes. Ballpark the um, installation and maintenance cost? Uh, installation of a backwater valve? Mm -hmm. a system. I will give you a range. You have to know that every home is different because it all depends. But to put a whole system in, a, a, a sump pit and a pump and a backwater valve, <laughs> most cases are anywhere from 3500 to five grand. And yep. some yearly yep. maintenance? Maintenance is about $200, <coughs> give or take a little bit, depending. But it, that would also include maintaining the line. Most yeah. people will maintain the line and maintain that valve. <coughs> Sir? Yeah, so what you're saying though, even if you install the, the valve you have here, mm -hmm. you have two problems. One is the sump pump turning on during that time period, so you're diverting that water. Right. But also the homeowner cannot use its facilities mm -hmm. because then you get the same results as if your sump pump kicked in, is what that, you're saying. That's, that's correct. correct. Yes. I correct. have a question on cleaning the sewer system. Yes. How some homeowners, like myself, do it ourselves with a <coughs> mechanical snake. Mm -hmm. yep. How does that valve <coughs> with a mechanical uh, snake um, damage? Yes, so this is actually a great question, yeah. and I'm glad yes. you said that because if you are a homeowner and you snake your own sewer, you have to take this you out. Remove it. You can remove it. Yeah, okay. pull so it out. This one, this is specifically the kind that is going to get installed within your basement walls on the on the inside. So this is going to sit anywhere from a foot to two feet deep. And then there's a sleeve that comes up with a cap that would be at your basement floor level. You take that cap off. These are designed so you can put, there's notches in them. Yeah. You can get a two by four on there, twist it off, take yeah. this cap right off, and you can pull this right out. Yeah. Obviously be aware of how you're um, pulling it out and put it back sure it goes the same back way. In. Then that also gives you access. I could snake from that yes. point. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, that's, yes. that's the best point. way to yes. do it, in okay. all honesty, is yeah. just snake it right from here. Thank yeah. you. Um, Let me move on. Yes, ma'am. Do you get extra flappers? <laughs> no, not generally, but what happens is they can be replaced. These are easy enough to be replaced, because they do tend to, if, if someone snakes a lot, we run into it all the time, where someone has snaked through it and the, and the uh, backwater valve is broken. So we can repair those, they're, they're, they can be repaired. Yeah. The 3,500 you just told us? Yes. For the whole system, is that if we have the valve put inside or outside? Either or, it really depends. Again, you know, you're sure. either going in outside and digging or you're going inside and breaking floor. So 
It does vary. Mm -hmm. It just all depends. Yes. If you already have a thumb pump, what would it be? Um, well, again, it would probably be less than that, a little bit, but you still have to put the valve in. The bulk of it really is putting the valve in. <clears throat> so everything would be on a case-by-case. Um, I would say you get someone to come out and we estimate it. We go out for free and do estimates, so we can do that. Yes? Do the tiles around our house need to be examined before this work would take place? Uh, usually not. Um, I mean, unless you're having other issues. <laughs> if we come into the home and we see a lot of uh, signs of problems with the drain tile which would be generally around the perimeter of your home you'll see water coming up that can be an indication but if you're not having any indication of a problem no we wouldn't necessarily yes sir yeah I've heard of homeowners having these installed and I can't speak to what maintenance they may or may not have done mm -hmm. but it, with the enormous amount of pressure that comes through that sewer line they still have some mitigated flow coming through. It's not an absolute 100%. Can you speak to that? It, could, it might be that it's not maintained or something's caught up in there. Uh, usually, if they've got something coming back, <clears throat> it's not sealing properly. So it, it, I, I get it checked. I have them just get it checked. Yeah. Someone else, sir? Yeah, just a quick question. The location again on the inside. Um, I live in a typical bungalow in Berkeley. I don't have a cell pump. I just got the drain line coming in. Right when it comes in, I've got my clean out. Then it goes to one floor drain. Then I got a stack pipe. I think most of us up here have that. So the location of that is going to be between, let's say, the clean out and the floor drain, basically. Generally, yes. Your your main clean out is close to your it's base right wall. the outside wall. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's. Pretty much, we'd be breaking the floor right there, removing Change that, that clean, out, clean out, and putting that in. That in place. That would still be the location. Clean out, though. That yeah, will be the your clean out. Again, removing the flapper. Yeah. Again, the depth, it looks like it's about maybe two feet deep or yeah. thereabouts. Yeah. We bring risers up. Yeah. 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 And then again, the maintenance part of it, that's not an issue. Reaching down in there, grabbing that flapper ball. Yeah. I, don't know. I yeah. suggest putting a glove well, on it. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes it's a, it, it is really that simple. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Are there different types of clean out valves, or uh, not clean out valves, of um, the backwater, backwater valves. flow yeah. valves. There's different manufacturers. There, there yeah. are. Okay. Yeah, there are different manufacturers. Yeah. Are they? Are there some that are more expensive and therefore more? Um, uh, Reliable. Reli yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> some there are there are different ones. Uh, you know, <laughs> it, there's a lot of differences, different ones out there. So like this would be your cheapest. This is your. You're not necessarily, I don't do anything the cheapest way because I, I want to make sure they work. But um, usually we are about midstream, yes. you know, uh, what the valves that we use. Um, some of these we've used for years and years and years and they have been tried and true. They work. So there are, you know, like anything, you can go on. There's so many different things out there. Anymore. We did install one last year in Huntington Woods, which was very involved um, and quite expensive, but it's a different kind of backwater valve that works on water pressure as the pipes fill up. There's like a bladder, almost like an accordion, and mm -hmm. as the pipe fills up, mm -hmm. this accordion mm -hmm. raises, and then it raises a flapper within the pipe to completely seal it. Mm -hmm. That, something like that would be your very high end kind That's of. That's the Cadillac version. Yes, <laughs> there are is, a few of them yes. out there. <coughs> Excuse me, sir. As more and more people get these installed and um, the ones that don't, is it gonna increase, increase their um, possibility of flooding? Could. I never say never, but it just, you know, once you start closing, it's just gonna keep working its way up. It will so keep working that, its we're way lucky, up. Or we're lucky enough not to be affected by the floods because now as more people install these and water continues to move, it could. It could. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. It's thank you. Could. Could. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yes. Is there any other questions? Okay. 
I think we are about um, hopefully uh, tackled quite a bit of information. Uh, the biggest thing, as you know, what is really you know what a backwater valve can do and it really can protect your home from a catastrophic flood coming in of sewage and uh, rainwater okay I think that's all then yeah. unless anyone has any other questions thank you So contact information uh, is up here as well as the copies of the slides are available as well. We'll make those, uh, we'll ask them to share with us so we can put those online so that anybody can grab those that way too if, uh, if you prefer that route. Our next speaker is uh, Josh Rubin of My Rain Barrel. Uh, which is, of course, a, a Michigan-based company. They're a sustainability company. So Ruben is uh, very involved in rain harvesting, collecting water, and all the different wonderful ways that you can put that to use around your own home. Uh, so, Mr. Ruben, the way to go. Joining. Um, however you found out about this event, it's really cool that Berkeley put it together for you. How many of your basements have flooded? Wow. Wow. How many of you have sump pumps? Wow. Still flooded. Okay. How many are thinking of getting a second sump pump? <laughs> Alright, well, much cheaper than sump pumps, rain barrels are awesome um, additions to everybody's home. This is one of the, not the cleanest ones, but so I get used olive barrels and I upcycle them. Um, upcycling is repurposing. It's a form of reuse, reusing things that are otherwise going to go to waste. So my whole company is centered around this barrel. Um, so how does that have to do with wet bas basements and flooding basements? Um, well, a rain barrel collects rainwater, so it kind of ties into this whole discussion and you just learned a lot. I have a very informative um, presentation by our first speaker. Um, and I just wanted to kind of come in where she left off. So your landscaping, your plumbing, your house, your roof, all that can work for or against you having a dry basement or wet basement. Um, rain barrels, uh, organic gardeners as well as all gardeners and also uh, emergency preparedness types, preppers, and just everybody could benefit from it, whether you think you could or not. I could probably find a way to tell you a rain barrel benefit you. And um, like our next speaker, we'll talk about the environmental impacts. Rain barrels can also, even if they're not helping you save money, or keep your basement dry. They are helping the environment, no matter, you know, keeping that water out of our sewer system. Um, in Michigan, specifically, a lot of what I'm gonna talk about is specific to you guys because you're Michigan residents. We are surrounded by the largest amount of fresh water in the world, and um, we're lucky. Um, so it's our job to keep it clean. It's our job to preserve the Great Lakes and um, prevent stormwater runoff and, you know, other pollution. So rain barrels do that without you, it, just by installing it, you're already going to be helping lower your carbon footprint and help preserve the Great Lakes just by installing any rain barrel. Any Michigander will be um, doing that right off, right off the bat. So how a rain barrel works is you cut your downspout, we attach the flex elbow adapter that comes with every one of our rain barrels. Um, there's a screen, there's a twist off lid so you can clean your rain barrel at the end of the season. Water enters, there's like an example of the screen. Um, we don't use like fine mosquito screen. If you want to add that, you can. But what we do is something cooler is we install this and then on top of it, in the tray here, you, have, you put uh, river rocks. So it creates a natural filter, um, eliminating bugs from seeing inside your barrel and seeing standing water. It looks really nice when the water's rushing over the rocks into the, into the barrel. Um, it does not make it a drinkable water source. It's not a filter in that sense. It's a debris filter for small and large debris. Between the screen and the rocks, you shouldn't have anything entering your barrel. Easy to clean as well. Just take off the lid, wash them out in the rain barrel, and put it back up. So after the water enters, you got your clothes spigot. It fills up. This doesn't have it attached, but we have every kit comes with a um, overflow valve. This little brass thing, if you already have your kit, uh, if you got a barrel tonight, or if you're going to get one later, we have some extras. Um, but they all come with a brass overflow adapter that has a, a threaded end that goes in the barrel, and then garden hose. So when your barrel fills, you can divert. One of the words I heard her using was overflow. 
So rain barrels have their own overflow, and that's really cool because now you can customize where your excess water goes. The first place it should go is away from the foundation of your house. Anywhere away from the house because if you improperly, if you install a rain barrel improperly, or let's say you just put this little hole here, or let's say you don't even put the hole there and you just have a bubble out the top, what's going to happen is that it's going to pool up underneath it, which will then create more water coming, you know, creeping into your basement. Um, could lead to easier flooding situations as well as leaks and all the headache that you don't want. But if you take like a 20 foot, at least 25 foot section of hose, you can do it 15 foot. Um, but anywhere from 15 to 25 feet, and you just attach it, and that will then divert the water away from the foundation of your home into a water feature like a rain garden. If you know about those, they're awesome. Plant na native Michigan plants and uh, help prevent stormwater runoff even more because the roots do a lot of the work. They absorb more. Native plants absorb twice as much water in a 24-hour period as prettier plant house plant or types of plants that you buy at the nursery whatever, native Michigan plants um, are, are another way to increase or lower your carbon footprint and help prevent stormwater runoff. Because um, a lot of stormwater runoff um, is off paved surfaces, but a lot of it's actually from fertilizer used on our lawns. So if you pay for lawn care, they're probably using phosphorus fertilizer unless you pay extra for them to use our organic stuff um, or non-phosphorus. And um, you know, 90% of fertilizer is phosphorus because it's cheap. And that, carries out into the lake streams and eventually the Great Lakes and also gets in our underground aquifer. That is what Toledo had the problem and they couldn't drink any water a few years back and the algal blooms. That's all directly related to this. Um, it's related to phosphorus fertilizer runoff, stormwater runoff, and also the overflow of our sewer treatment facility in Detroit. Now, Metro Detroit all kind of like goes into like one, basically all our sewage goes, if it overflows, you know, in Detroit, it goes into the Detroit River, and that flows south to Toledo in Lake Erie. So even though we don't see it, our neighbors are dealing with it, you know? So, you know, we would hate if, you know, that was our situation. So like I said, it's our job to keep these Great Lakes clean, regardless of it's affecting Lake Huron, Superior, or Michigan, which we frequent, our runoff is affecting, our overflow is affecting Ohio and Pennsylvania and New York more as it flows out. So to prevent algal blooms and blah, 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 phosphorus fertilizer is bad. You should make a note of that. So when you go buy your fertilizer, ask your lawn care company, try to get something better. But the rain barrel will divert it to a rain garden, help prevent it, even without the rain garden. So you can take it to the next level, install a rain garden, but you can also just kind of divert it towards a tree, let the roots do the work, towards a ditch, to a creative place away from the foundation of your home. And you can also, at this point, take that hose and then drill holes in it and turn, turn your overflow hose now into a homemade soaker hose. I, like I upcycle my barrels, would with, with, with hope that you find your old hose in your garage and upcycle it, turn it into a soaker hose, and then go buy a new one for your main line, your pressurized line outside your house, and then upcycle your old hose into a now a rain barrel soaker hose. You can. If you have an overhang on the side of your house, divert it like to plants that may not get as much water. Um, that kind of works. Um, but be careful, like I said, it depends on your foundation. In the landscaping, um, you know, design, make sure your rain barrels are level, like this level. If your rain barrel is like this, you may end up with water kind of coming out. It, there's lots of things to do to properly install it. And if you ever have questions, you can always contact my rain barrel, me. I am my rain barrel from Joshua, but you can find my website and hit a contact us and I'll be your rain barrel consultant because I get questions from people all over the country. I would much rather talk to some people who are right here, my neighbors. So if you ever have questions down the road using it, feel free to shoot me some pictures, text, and um, I'm gonna show you a couple fun products that go with rain barrels that you might have heard of and just to give you an idea. Um, so Flex Elbow comes with every kit, can be used in an A or B style. And there's like kind of like a C style where you kind of like wrap it around a corner. Can be done. Very versatile. That's why they come with all our rain barrels. Um, catch rain drop diverters are our upgrade we offer. Um, there's an illustration on the back of it. If you want, if you're really interested in it later, just come and talk to me. Basically, this would fill up. Oh, 
Let's give you a lesson real quick in water surface tension. So how does a diverter work? Because the water in your downspout, this actually would be really good for the kids, water mm -hmm. adheres to its closest surfaces. So water in your downspout, a lot of people think that it's like falling through the center. Really, it's clinging to the ridges on the sides. It doesn't just free fall down the middle. So on that theory of surface tension of water, this colander, rainwater colander is made and basically is a trough around the perimeter, like a donut. And the water goes in there and then out this, into your rain barrel, off here. So you go into the rain barrel, out of this. When it's full, the water, because we wouldn't have an overflow here, you would actually use your overflow valve that we give you as an intake and an outtake. Instead of using the hole in the top, you would use a hole right here. The water would fill up and then back out and down. This allows you to keep the second half of your downspout and have your rainwater go where it was already going while saving rainwater in your rain barrel on the side. So it's another way to approach connecting your rain barrel with a automatic, I call them automatic rainwater diverter, but it's a catch raindrop brand name. Flex elbow. And then there's the fancier ones which not as many people use but are really cool. I thought I'd show you guys. The Y diverter. Well, it's more like an upside down Y diverter. But inside there, we got a little switch. And this lets us basically switch from rain barrel to not rain barrel, or from one rain barrel to another, or from a pond to a rain barrel, or whatever water feature you want. This is a manual rainwater diverter. Um, these are hard to find, so you probably want to contact me. Um, you can't get these at Home Depot or anything like that. Um, so those are like kind of fun things. Um, I also carry these, even though I said with the rocks in the top of our rain barrel, you don't need. Uh, and you won't have any mosquito problems. That being said, some people just don't believe me. Um, they don't think that putting rocks in your rain barrel are going to stop mosquitoes, and they like hate mosquitoes. And so I sell a lot of these. Um, and they're, I don't, are you, how many of you have gardens? Like, okay. Are you familiar with uh, the organic uh, pesticide BT? So if you have a problem, a pest problem, and you're an organic gardener, and you obviously can't put pesticides on your crops, <laughs> then you're going to know about this stuff called BT. Uh, it has a really long Latin name. That's just for short, BT. Um, and uh, it was invented to stop the spread of malaria in Africa. Because um, it kills mosquitoes at the breeding level. It, it, it sterilizes the male adult. And it also um, kills all the larvae with the bacteria. So you're fighting insects with bacteria that's harmless for wildlife and you know you can't drink it still so don't drink it. do not drink your rain barrel ever just, just, unless it's an emergency if it's like walking dead zombie apocalypse you can drink your rain barrel. but other than that um, or if you got like some crazy life straw filter thing like that's on you but i'm not promoting drinking rain barrels um, legally i can't and um so this is like imagine this is your ground the last thing with rain barrels is Flow. People are like, oh, well, how, you know, I'm used to this much pressure off the side of my house. Like, how is this rain barrel going to actually work? Is it going to have enough pressure? Is it even going to go across my yard? The answer is yes. And you have a lot more control because you have gravity. But that being said, this is an example of the rain barrel stands I make um, out of reclaimed pallets and uh, scrap wood um, and contractor scrap. So basically, we basically. Uh, designed this to be a certain height so that you can then put your rain barrel on it, get better flow, because every foot you go at this point, every foot off the ground, you're doubling your pressure. Um, it's exponential. So like, you go this high, you're gonna, now you will max out due to the size of the spigot. At some point, like, you're gonna like, get, you know, there's no point to put a rain barrel on your roof. Just to be honest, don't do that. But this is about right, because you know what'll fit right here? A five, I don't have a five gallon bucket to show you, but it will fit perfectly under here. And a lot of people, when you're doing gardening, even though watering cans are cute, five-gallon buckets are more efficient. That's what I use. So we designed this to perfectly fit a five-gallon bucket. Um, you know, we keep our price points really low. This is also an upcycled product. Um, you know, I run a sustainable company. I'm trying to help you reduce your and lower your carbon footprint and reduce waste by teaching people how to harvest rainwater efficiently. And um, you know, I think there's a lot that goes into it that people. I have so many questions, a lot of people are kind of scared to even get started. But once they get started, they start with one rain barrel, then they get two, then three, and four, and like I see them years later, and they're oh, I got this one, and my dad's got one, and 
You know, the next thing I know, they told their whole family, and it's crazy because my dad, who you might imagine, who's been helping me and actually like helped start plant the seed for me to be and live a more sustainable life. Um, you know, he said his grandmother had one. Now he's really old, so that's like <laughs> years ago. It's like Fred Flintstone. She had a rain barrel. What happened? Why did we get so far away from it? What happened? Technology, convenience, highways, cities, pavement. I mean, being able to turn the water, turn the spigot and get water and have it be safe and clean. Being in charge of, of, of maintaining your own water and the idea of just wasting the water that falls on your roof is crazy to me. And any state or any city that says that it's illegal to capture rainwater, I would wholeheartedly fight them. <coughs> you know, it is absolutely your right to catch water that's falling on your property on your roof. And I'm a testament to that because I sell these in 50 states, regardless of laws. I get the, isn't it illegal question? Like, Every event ever, I ever go to, and it's not illegal, especially not here. Actually, cities like Berkeley and the Clinton River Watershed Council here and every other watershed around here encourages it, and Ann Arbor is actually starting to give tax credits. And um, Detroit might be starting to give tax credits to people who install water-saving infrastructure type things in their home because they know that we have a problem, we know the sewers are overflowing, they know that the cities weren't designed to handle this much water or this many people, and you know, with the way the Metro Detroit's laid out, it's like sprawling out, you know, so far. Imagine how much pavement there is and how much water is rushing every time. So I mean you hold back fifty gallons every time it rains, a decent like inch of rain, you get a full rain barrel in like fifteen minutes. It's crazy. It fills up way faster than you think too. So if you do the math, you can calculate your own water, you know, what you've done. But if you can think about how it feels for me to sell thousands of these throughout the last eight years, and um, how much more, like, and then calculate how much water we've helped save, that's why I do this, because it doesn't just help me pay the bills, it helps me feel better, like I'm contributing and helping this planet and uh, leaving it maybe a little bit, or at least even trying. Even if I don't leave it better than what I, you know, if we don't try and we don't teach each other and teach our kids, um, you know, I got two daughters, that rain barrels are just like, they make sense to them. Like they'll never have to like have it explained because their dad's just like shoving it on their throat. But at the same point, like I go to schools, you know, if you have any schools that want to do assemblies, presentations, I come to classrooms, I do obviously city events. Um, we work with the Sierra Club, we work with the watershed councils, nonprofits across all Metro Detroit and farther. Um, any type of event, um, like I'll help create a custom event for your group, garden club, whatever. So. You know, big or small, you know, we have events that are this size, twice the size, half the size, um, or just like a room full of people discussing the environment. So whatever you're into, um, I'd be down to connect, network, and uh, stay in touch. I'm my Rain Barrel. You can find a bunch of information about me on this website. It's really easy to remember my name. I made it kind of for you guys, because like Michigan Rain Barrel. I mean, oh, where did I get that Rain Barrel? Michigan Rain Barrel. OK, that makes sense. It's pretty easy. It's very hard to forget. And, um, the only thing that I'd say that um, you know, if you have, if you got a rain barrel today, there's a truck around the back. Um, to check this right here with Richard, my father, and uh, you get your kit, and then you go get your barrel. Um, actually, that guy that just walked in there, Tony, with the dreadlocks, they'll load you up. Um, so uh, we're, you know, online. I'm on. Etsy, I'm on Amazon, I have my own website, I got distributors, but I would love to directly deal with you guys one-on-one. -on -one. So um, there is a free coupon after this event. You go to my website and you just type in Berkeley, literally. We go into the store, right at the top it says store, under the rain, under rain it says store. Click there, the first thing on there is a rain barrel. You can add one of these, you can add one of these, or some of these if you want. Type in coupon code Berkeley, get free shipping. That's forty dollars off every rain barrel. So there's seventy bucks online, but that extra seventeen bucks over the fifty-three dollar price tonight will have it delivered to your door here in Berkeley. So um, you know, try to do what I can for the local communities. Questions? Can you be gone for a couple months and have that? So vacation mode, <laughs> we'll call it. Yeah, um, is, what time of year would you be gone? What? what time of year? Like, summer. would it be winter? Summer? Summer into 
Wow. Summer, you can do two things. So if you're in vacation mode, there's two ways to handle it. One, you can just kind of like let it fill up and uh, like if maybe other people might want to use it while you're gone, like family members or someone, but like no one's living there, it will divert out the overflow fine and go where it needs to go. It should all be good. But if you're just kind of like, it's pointless because we're going to be gone for a month or more or two, you can attach the overflow hose to the spigot and leave it open and the water will just run through it and then go out the hose here to away from the home, away from your basement. Because the goal is to like keep your basement dry and the reason rain barrels make sense is it's like, it just does the work for you. You know, it's like by installing a rain barrel, you're doing all these awesome things I just told you all about, but you're also simply going to take charge and diverting your water where you want it to go. You're saying, hey, I want my water to go here, um, you know, without having to go get new gutters and go redo all your, I don't know, our landscaping, you know, so um, less is more sometimes. If you, so I would just take your overflow hose and put it on the spigot and leave it open. Would be if you're gone for a decent length of time. During winter, it has to be winterized. Winterized. So if it's like consistently below freezing, which this has been the weirdest winter ever as far as temperatures, <laughs> six degrees on Friday. Um, yeah, so if it's below freezing consistently, you're going to want to like leave it open. You know, just let water go through it. A little bit of water will get in here. It'll freeze. It'll expand. It'll thaw. It'll be fine. But if you have water in heat all the way up to here and it freezes, you can crack your barrel really easily. Some people luck out and it doesn't happen the first year. You had one for like three or four years and then it cracked. Um, you know, if it, we make sure not to drill any of our spigots or, or you know, on the seam, uh, on where the barrels are actually literally seamed together in the factory, because that's a weak point and we noticed that when they were splitting, they were often splitting on the seams and if, you know, back, back when, um, yeah. Because mine did split. Okay, <laughs> two theories. Um, my wife makes me scrub the dishes before they go in the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of person would take this into the garage for the winter and not leave it out. Me, I'm lazy. I left it out. So um, in that case, just keep it open, and so that it the freeze and thaw cycles don't doesn't <coughs> make it split. My problem when it did split is that was two years ago yeah. when we had that really, it was nice and warm, That's probably till yeah. almost Thanksgiving, and then it went down to zero. Well, it was full, and it froze solid before I got a chance to drain it. So if you are going to keep it outside, drain it yes. for the winter and keep the spigot open. If otherwise, take it in. And one other comment, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, about the laws regarding rain barrels. And the reason I feel comfortable to do this is I am a licensed attorney, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, Michigan specifically allows rain barrels under the building codes. There's actually a provision in the Michigan state laws that actually says you can do this. Almost every city in the greater metro area not only allows you to do rain barrels, but encourages it. Like Josh said, we've mm -hmm. worked with Oak Park, oh, yeah. Woods, here with Berkeley, West Bloomfield, City of Detroit, 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 Detroit. 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 Um, You know, we, I was out in St. Joseph talking to their community at their public library this summer. Um, you know, it's- Where people get into trouble is, into it. is when they get a little aggressive. One guy had 12 rain barrels stacked up to the second story and down. Yeah. Well, like that said. was a nuisance Don't because these weigh, water weighs um, eight, pound, eight point something pounds. Yeah. This holds over 50 gallons. You're talking 450 pounds, two stories high. It's a death trap. Yeah. So um, yeah. he got in trouble. I don't think the rain barrels should be put above like head high, really. Um, and, and really, some of the events that we've done, like here's one that's pretty cool. We did one with the Heidelberg Project in Detroit. Um, you know, we do one in the spring if you want. The next one I'll probably do because this is like in the middle of my off season is uh, rain barrels on the riverfront, and it is in uh, April with the Sierra Club right on the Riverwalk. Uh, super fun. We paint the rain barrels. It's really fun for kids. We like. We usually get like between 50 and 100 people. So it's a pretty big one. Um, if you want to kick off, like it's Earth Day week, it'll be like right around Earth Day. So that's probably like 
the time of year where like rain barrels are on everyone's mind more. I think it's great. Yeah, so there's a method to do it. Um, I can I can give you the details, but it's pretty easy um, with stuff from the hardware store. But it's fun. Yeah. I got a question, but it might not be fair. I live next to a vacant lot, mm -hmm. and the city has issued a permit for Eli's construction to build a four-bedroom house that five people will live in and take five showers every day, probably do two loads of laundry every day, run the dishwasher, and flush their toilet 15 times every day. The rainwater that used to fall on the vacant lot is now going to fall on the roof and on the driveway and roll down into the street yep. and go into the sewer with all the extra sewage coming from this additional new house that will also come up in my basement. Uh -huh. So how many rain barrels am I going to need to counteract <laughs> this 55,000 gallons coming from this house next door? We might, we, well, you can link rain barrels together. You can uh, increase your storage that way. But there are, I have some other like larger options for larger volumes of water. I, I guess what I need to do is get the backwater preventer valve That's and also put it on backwards on that house. <laughs> 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 yeah. You know, like I was saying earlier, you put the phosphorus fertilizers, and even if it's like that, it's your neighbor's problem somehow with rainwater can easily become yours. I don't mind water standing in the street. But I mind water standing in my basement. Yeah. We need to close some of the manhole covers yeah. and reduce the speed at which the rainwater fills up the sewers. And, and that's, that's a good point, and that's something that we're working on. But um, let's let's yeah. let's wrap up the rain barrel conversation because we've got a great set. speaker coming up um, from the watershed council. After we're done, yeah. if you have a barrel, like I said, find Richard. If you me. didn't. We'll be if you didn't sign in and you prepaid for a barrel, please find me outside and we can give you your parts that Josh showed you. And then after Abby speaks, you can pick up your rain barrel uh, at the truck. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Two great speakers so far. Look forward to keeping it going. Uh, Ms. Abigail Lane is here representing the Clinton Huron Watershed Council. Uh, if anybody had a chance to stop at the booth outside, you see just how massively large the Watershed Council is. And, and they cover a lot of space and they do it very, very well. Uh, their wealth of information, their website is, is behind me if anyone wants to visit it. It's uh, easy to remember, CRWC. CRWC.org. Uh, rolls off the tongues. Um, and without further ado, Ms. Abigail Lane. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. I'm going to keep it really short because I know it's kind of getting late and you guys have heard a lot of information already. But I kind of wanted to just come in and, and sort of provide that cherry on top for why you're doing what you're doing here today. We talked a lot about you know why you want a rain barrel for protecting your own personal home protecting your family, your community, but it's also really important to think about why it's important to protect our water resources, especially in this Great Lakes region. So uh, my name is Abby Lane. I work for the Clinton River Watershed Council. We are a nonprofit based in Rochester Hills, but we cover the entire Clinton River watershed. Um, here in Berkeley, your watershed and your river is the Clinton River. And what that means is that the water runoff coming from your property here in Berkeley eventually ends up in the Clinton River um, and then to Lake St. Clair. So what's so important about retaining this water runoff is um, Christine did a really good job at highlighting what a combined sewer system is. Um, so here in Berkeley, your stormwater runoff is actually going to your sewers to be treated as a water treatment plant. Um, and so what we've actually experienced here in Berkeley when we get a really heavy rain is we get some of those backups coming into our basements and, and things like that um, or up through the storm drains. What we didn't talk about yet today is what happens when it doesn't go there but it actually goes out to the rivers and streams. So when, when it's backing up into your basements it's also going into our rivers and streams and that would be the Clinton River. And so who can tell me where the Clinton River flows to? Anybody know? Lake St. Clair. Lake St. Clair. Someone said it. 
So Lake St. Clair, the Clinton River flows to Lake St. Clair. It's draining about 760 square miles of land, which Berkeley is part of. All that drains the Clinton River and off to Lake St. Clair, which connects to what Great Lake? Lake Erie. Lake Erie, right? So this water that we're talking about on our property that you're collecting in your rain barrel that you're keeping out of um, these, these rivers is actually helping to protect the Great Lakes Basin which actually accounts for about one-fifth of the world's freshwater resources. So what you guys are doing today by purchasing these rain barrels and helping to keep this runoff out of not only the sewer system to relieve the water treatment plants, but also keeping that polluted stormwater runoff and the sewer overflows out of our rivers is a great um, success for this community and for our watershed. So I want to personally thank you on behalf of the Clinton River Watershed for taking that step towards clean water and clean community. Um, there's a lot of information I brought about our organization. We do a lot of uh, education and stewardship. Um, we have a ton of volunteer opportunities. If you're ever looking to get involved in other um, stewardship activities, we do cleanups every week on Wednesdays all throughout our watershed. We have some opportunities for adults to get involved with um, water quality monitoring, actually, of our streams. Um, so if you get a chance before you leave, I'll, I'm not going to go on and on about those, but I brought a whole bunch of stuff and it's all out on the table out there. So please take a second to browse that. Um, I brought our watershed map too, um, so you can check that out as well. But really I just wanted to highlight the important work you guys are doing to you know, harness that rainwater, protect our Great Lakes, and also protect your water quality here in the city of Berkeley. So I think with, without further ado, that's all I have. I said I was going to keep it short, and I, I want to do that. I know everyone wants to do that. So just uh, to close things up, I want to reiterate the thank yous that have come. I really appreciate everyone that came out tonight. Everybody, hopefully, everybody came away with some really good information. Um, this is, again, just one of the conversations that we're having. Uh, we're also tackling issues at the, the city level, the regional level, uh, trying to find out a better way of managing these intense storms that we know are coming more frequently. Uh, again, all this will be found on our website. Uh, we're going to get it up in the next couple of days both the audio rec or the video recording, the information presented, the contact information for any of the speakers that you have tonight. And so, again, keep the conversation going. Uh, once again, my name is Matt Bonger, the city manager, and if anybody wants to reach out for more information about what we're doing in our other regards, uh, I mean, more than happy to, to have a one-on-one -on -one with anybody uh, who's interested in talking about it. So without further ado, again, thank you, and uh, have a good evening. Thank you.